let's start with our presentation about Camunda BPM custom batch um, and then also some real life examples um, how we are doing this for, for Kühn and Nagel right now. Um, so, who we are, we got already introduced. So, Simon from Holisticon, um, myself, Stefan Becker, um, but also, also we want to give most credits to Patrick. Mm -hmm. He's the main distributor for this um, extension. Um, so, thank you very much, Patrick, for all your work that you spent already for this. Um, let's go into this topic. Um, so the clients that we have, um, we had to um, handle a lot of huge amount of data, yeah, for, for Kuhn and Nagel. So just maybe um, what we are doing, it's a reassignment of tasks, yeah. So task assignment in general is a big topic for us. So maybe you have um, for one region, maybe on a country level, because we're distributed in different countries, we have a few thousand of tasks currently up and running in our system. And then someone is saying, yeah, but now we did some changes on production. Um, can you please reassign all of the 10,000 tasks? Say, yeah, 10,000 may will work. Um, how much time do you have for this? I want to get it immediately, please. But don't interrupt, of course, then our main business because we do not want to have some side effects on the application. Yeah, I say, okay. Yeah, we will try to do this and somehow, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what we have as well is some technical cleanup, housekeeping and so on. We're talking, we know about it, also about tons of data then at the end that we have to handle every day. Yeah, um, also we at Kuhn-Nagel, we're work, working also with the um, history full log that we are providing. So you can think about what kind of amount of data we are producing with every process every day, so we need also something to clean it up at some point in time. So the history tables are getting quite big. And what we said already, we want to decouple it from the business process and of course from the business application overall. We don't want to have some side effects, yeah? Just do it and somehow. But what we said as well on the business requirement, it would be nice if we can get some monitoring for this. I want to know how far we are with this cleanup, and especially for the reassignment, because then the business is calling us and saying, are you done? Everything reassigned right now? I will going back to my um, employees, to my operators, and say, you can continue working on this. You should now have the right task assigned to you. I said, okay, yeah, we need a monitoring for this. We can build it, yeah. And of course, we need some recovery, some fault tolerance. What is happening is something, especially maybe for the cleanup, for the reassignment or something like this, is not working out as we expect. Just some technical exception is thrown. Okay, think about we would do it all in one big transaction. Okay, we assign 10,000 of tasks, yeah, but the last one will fail. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so we, we have all the stuff again, but first of all, of course, we have to fix the one. Yeah, which is causing all the trouble. So um, I have to go back to the business and say, sorry guys, we need another turnaround. We even need a deployment right now in the middle. Yeah? Um, I think we can do some downtime now. I'm just kidding, we do it all without downtime. So these are the business requirements that we have. And we had a look on the Camunda solution. Said, okay, but most of the stuff we have already in the Camunda um, version with 7.5, a lot of stuff is already available. Yeah, manual operation on human tasks is the same, what you're providing on the documentation. Yeah. Um, especially it's beginning for migration of processes. Yeah. The provider, I think that was the first tryout to get it done on Comunda side. In the meanwhile, they do it also for some other stuff. Of course, what we see in here is also something that has to do with cleanup. So it fits a little bit to our needs, yeah? doesn't it? Um, yeah, so we have already something in place, but uh, at the end, I asked and also the guys from Holisticon to say, yeah, especially the Patrick because he's in my project, what can we do right now with this? Yeah, and then here's the results, Simon. Uh? Yeah, the point was that actually uh, the feature was there, it was part of the core, and it was part of the uh, core engine. Um, but it was a little bit tricky to get in contact to this feature. So um, basically, it was intended in the beginning just for internal workload of the engine, like history cleanups, migration, and so on. Uh, there were no um, real uh, public API on that. And um, the programming of that was pretty time-consuming and complex, so 
you had to deal with all internals of Camunda, and as a usual Camunda user, you are just facing the public API. So it's not of, uh, uh, part of the uh, public API, and you had to dig deeply inside to know what's going on there. So um, if you want to do this without the extension that was actually then built in order to provide this, is uh, uh, something that uh, you have to create a so-called batch entity. So this is the internal structure that Kamunt uh, uh, maintains to execute this. And uh, in fact, yes, uh, create a C job. So the C job is responsible for creating these batches and creating a monitoring job that is then observing these uh, batches to be executed and create the singular batch jobs that then run in particular. And it is a pretty amount of code. And then, last but not least, you have to create this configuration. You have somehow to pass your input values to Kamunda and say, now, please work on this amount of data. So just to give you an example, don't try to read this. This is what <laughs> you want to uh, do if you want to create this batch entity, pretty amount of code uh, for doing this. And then if you want to configure this, it's more than 200 lines of codes of doing configuration on very, very basic level in Kamunda. And actually, it has nothing to do with your business, right? So it's plumbing with Kamunda code, which is OK. But then, basically, Patrick said, you know, there, were, there are ways to do it better and provided, actually, this uh, custom extension. So then you can actually focus on what you want to perform in your batch and not doing plumbing all the time. So first idea. It should be available, so anyone should be able to use this without any complicated uh, coding. Uh, it should be fast and easy integrated. And as you heard from Stefan, of course, it's already used in production. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the way how Kuhn and Nagel solve these problems now. And now it even became an uh, official extension. And last night, we had a new release of this, uh, introducing one important feature, which is job priorities. So let's have a look on how this actually works, so how it feels if you want to create these bad jobs and uh, basically how we use it. So before we go into details, I would just show you the main concepts. So imagine we have amount of data that needs to be processed. And this consists of n items, maybe 10,000 of emails we want to send or 10,000 of user tasks that needs to be reassigned. And we identify that it is actually not possible to do it in one in one invocation. So we don't want to do it in one hit, but we say, all right, we are aiming to create batches, which are subset, basically splitting this data block into multiple smaller blocks. And in each block, we want to configure how many invocations are basically in this one particular batch. And of course, if you divide the one number by another, then you have the number of jobs, of the batch jobs that will, in the end, uh, run on your uh, Kamunda. After this separation is done, uh, a C job is created, and this C job is actually only responsible for starting these bad jobs. And again, here you can uh, want to configure not if you just split up your 10,000 emails in 100 chunks, you don't want to start 100 jobs in the same time because you will probably break down the database or whatever. So you want you know, to configure how many of them run in parallel. So this is another parameter you want to tune and to say, OK, maybe something like history cleanup is not so important. So we can delay it and we say, OK, just one batch at a time, one after another. And sometimes then it's at some point it will be just finished. OK, so this is what we want to configure, actually. But before we actually configure the whole con uh, this, uh, this whole batch, this batch needs to be performed by some some code, right? So this bad job needs to be executed. So, and basically we start there. So we are implementing a job handler. And job handler is uh, a component that gets something like an execute method where you get this batch data inside and then you can perform your tasks. So you can clean up or you can reassign tasks or whatever. So this is the actual worker that is doing something. And that's that easy, right? So you're implementing a class, you're extending a provided, uh, basically, uh, abstract class that needs to be subclassed. And you specify the basic type, what is getting in there. So in this case, it's uh, basically a string. So we are getting a list of strings as the input for, the, for every batch. 
Okay, so after doing this, uh, what we need to provide is a provide configuration. And this is done with help of a batch builder. This batch builder is basically also part of the extension and it provides the possibility to say, uh, this is actually uh, my internal, uh, uh, so the, the input is actually my data that I want to work with. Then I pass it over to this custom batch builder. Then I register my job handler that is then executing the single tasks and actually I'm done. So this is the minimal setup to run the custom batch and this will execute with some defaults which are uh, part of the extension. But actually you can tune it and you can say, okay, well, we spoke about this uh, number of jobs per seed and the invocations per batch and even this is the the last feature that got into the last uh, version that you can prioritize these jobs. So probably task assignment is much more important than cleaning up history. So if we have a batch executor that is, you know, running all the time, we want to make sure that this task assignment will be executed with higher priority than, for example, cleanup. Okay, so we can configure these custom get batches, how they behave. So if we have multiple in parallel, how they behave to each other and what is executed first and what is then. Okay, and finally, in order to activate all of this, we need a small hook uh, which activates actually this execution. So you provide actually a process engine plugin that just registers this uh, particular job executor and then it is available. So this code is uh, Spring based, but you can do the same actually in the container, but then you have to provide not bean configuration, but probably on supplier or whatever in Java EE. So it's, you can transform it actually one to one. Okay, so this is uh, how it feels, and I have to pass over to you. Yeah, again, thank right? you very much, Simon. So, now of course, the question how we're doing using this right now at Kühn and Nagel. Yeah? So, now we provided a custom extension to give also something back to the community. Um, and of course, the question okay, what we are doing with this? Okay, what I said already at the beginning, okay, now we have some jobs in here. Okay, just have a brief look, um, just turn around to the right. It doesn't matter, I can also look in front. Uh, <laughs> so, um, what we said already, we have some, some cleanup jobs in the background running. Um, so, one also interesting for us, what we call unclaim inactive tasks. So, this is now what you can see with this 100% um, in there. So, what, what is this about? Yeah. So, this is getting triggered. It's a defined configuration, maybe every hour. This is what we are doing, or every half hour. And this is looking for some tasks that got claimed. Yeah, but the user is not working on this anymore. Because let's think about uh, the scenario, okay, the user is just claiming a task and then thinking, oh, oh, nice weather outside. Maybe I have to go to a beach club, yeah? Um, and just shutting down um, his notebook and going home to the beach club, yeah? So, um, he said, hmm, but so no one can use uh, work on this task right now because he claimed this, yeah? What do we do now? So we say, okay, after a certain point of time, we want to do an unclaim. Doesn't matter if you're still working on this, normally after one hour, you should be finished with this task, yeah? Um, normally a task should take only a few minutes and not a really long time. So we say, okay, we just unclaim this. And this is what we did, yeah? So in here we have this type unclaim inactive tasks. So we have a total jobs in here, 67. So it was a good weather probably outside. Um, <laughs> so some people went home. Um, of course, it also can happen for something else. The people going to lunch or whatever, yeah, just, just going because a colleague is saying, okay, let's go, yeah? um, I have some time or I have some meetings or whatever. It can be tons of reasons for this. Yeah? And then the configuration, of course, what you're doing, we say batch jobs per seed, in this case, is 100. Okay, it doesn't make sense right now because we don't have in that many in here. So they're all in one big seed, yeah? so quite easy. Um, no big calculation needed, as I can do in my head. <laughs> and then we have invocation per batch job, so we decide, okay, do one by one. Yeah? So there should be generally not so many in there, so it's not a big deal. Yeah? We also have some further batches that we have in here. I don't want to go through all of them, but we use it for different use cases, yeah? um, what we see in general. Um, we also have uh, then, of course, a nice monitoring in here that's already provided by Kamunda because in the Kamunda cockpit, if you use this, because Kamunda is using the same at the end of the day. Yeah? Um, if you do this, what I said at the beginning, you just do this cleanup, um, just do it maybe on a test environment or locally, even better, um, play around and just do some cleaning, you would see the same. 
If you use then the custom batch extension and provide your own batches, what we saw where you will see the same as well. So there's no difference. Yeah, for the operator outside, yeah, they do not even know if this is something triggered from this form, from Kamunda, or it is maybe triggered from some other reasons. Yeah? Um, so I have in here all my batches. So I have batches which are in progress. I know the current state. Yeah? The one is completed, okay, 100. Next refresh it will be go over to ended batches. Yeah? Then we have the batches still in progress. The other one, we are not really done with this. We have 23% in there. So this is something to do. Yeah? Quite moni nice monitoring. But I see also on our ended batches, what happened? What kind of batches did I execute during the last time frame? How long did they took me on production? Yeah? So I have a started time, I have an ended time, I know how long it took me to proceed all these batches. Yeah? And if I click on it, I also have this information, what was ongoing in there. Yeah? See the configuration, see how many um, completed jobs were in here, and so on. But of course, what we said already, let's think about the one assignment stuff with a few thousand in there, something is failing, I would see it as well. Of course, we do not have any failed jobs because <laughs> we do an implementation correctly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if it would happen, yeah, I, we would see this. Also in the failed job um, part in here. So it's a question, of course, now how we trigger this stuff. Um, so of course, we have dedicated points in there. We triggered for the one side, what I said, for the unclaimed task there. Yeah? We just have a wait event, we have a process, and it's just doing this stuff. Um, just with the timer, start event, yeah? Um, for the reassignment, we have, of course, a human trigger in here. So someone is going in here, we have uh, just a form for this um, kind of processes for the reassignment, and this is then what is getting triggered. For the start event, we have a form, is just auto-generated with the input variables that I need, so maybe some further validations that I do not put completely Stupid stuff in here, yeah, and then I say, okay, go ahead, um, just start it, yeah, and then we have one the service task, and the service task we just have this delegate, this is then creating the batches in the background. This is all what we need to do, and then we, we already end it. Of course, this is quite technically, yeah, we also could do this maybe in a different way, uh, but also for this we have a nice monitoring. How often did we execute it? For what kind of configuration did we do the execution? Yeah, we also know then at the end because it, people have to log in the Kamuna cockpit. Who executed this? Yeah, who started the process? Yeah, um, and so on and so on. So everything is available just with Kamuna board functionality that we have. And this is, of course, um, one example that we have in production because maybe someone of you is saying, okay, he's talking about a few thousand of tasks. This cannot be true. Um, it is true. So we have now an example in here with um, yeah, almost 10, so over 10,000 tasks in here um, also proceeded. Um, so we started this also the start time, someone in the morning's um, UTC times, um, 7.49, um, and then we have 7.52. It's already completed. It's not taking really long time, yeah, but the user doesn't want to wait for this. Yeah? We do not want to block the user to proceed with this work. He's just saying, okay, I just do this, yeah, and I'm coming back and check it later on. Yeah? Of course, what you can think about it, if you're starting this on the process, you can also provide some information. Your batch, which you started with this information, is completed and set out an email or whatever you would like to. So. That's all, also from the business perspective then, how we use this um, at Kühn und Nagel. Um, yeah, what you said already, it's an um, extension we provided for Kamunda, just you to QR code, um, go on GitHub, check it out, play around, we're always, always looking for some new distributed things, and um, yeah, feel welcome to also provide us some feedback.